Hey everybody, welcome to the second part of our snowboard design and construction video series. Now in the first part we took a look at how shape, camber and side cut affected how the board rode. In the second part what we're going to do is take a board to bits and have a look at how construction determines not only just the performance of the board but also the riding characteristics of it. So the starting point for this video is let's take a look at how a snowboard is built. So we're going to pull up a graphic now and I'm just going to run you through the different elements of the construction. What I'm going to do is start from the top sheet and then work backwards from there all the way through to the base. So as you can see on the graphic, uh, on the left hand side we've got the top sheet. Now the top sheet is really there as just a means to carry the graphics and also to protect the structural layers underneath. Uh, pretty much most boards have a top sheet but when you start to get towards the top end and really specialist board what a lot of brands tend to do is just remove the top sheet to save weight and print directly onto the structural layer. However for the majority of boards you are going to have a top sheet. This is just a normally an ABS material and it just adds some durability to the board and like I say protects the structural layers from water damage and sun damage. Okay, so next to the top sheet, we have the first structural layer. Now, it's the structural layers that add strength to the board, and these are formed from fiberglass. What I'm not going to do at this moment is just run into any detail about this fiberglass, because we're going to kind of look at that in more detail a bit later on. Right. Next to that, you have an upper reinforcing level. Now, not every board has that, so if you're looking for an easier, softer flexing board, it's not going to have those upper reinforcing levels. So um, that's just really there to show you in a high-end board what would be there. Okay, then next to that, we have the core. Now, the core is the powerhouse of the board. It's pretty much where uh, the manufacturers determine the flex, and the characteristics of the board. We've got a little bit of a detailed look into cores coming up uh, and we're going to run through the materials that you use and how you manipulate the performance of that core just to kind of give you very specific riding characteristics and performance characteristics. Next to that you then have uh, another reinforcing level. So that reinforcing level can be either on the top or on the bottom. Then next to that, again, another structural layer. This again is a fiberglass uh, and it just adds torsional rigidity and pulls the whole board together. Next to that, you've got the base. Uh, the base comes in various uh, different grades. Again, we're going to run in into that in a little bit more detail. Then within that, you have the side walls. The side walls protect the core from water ingress and also give the board... Uh, a bit more strength and durability. They also can work as a dampening level just to take out vibrations as well. Then you've got the metal edges. Uh, the metal edges are what engage into the snow and give you that uh, turning performance. So that is basically uh, a sandwich construction snowboard. Pretty much every board on the market nowadays is made in that particular way. Uh, it's it's pretty simple to make, uh, it gives you options in terms of tuning the performance of the board and how it rides, so it is a really great way to manufacture a snowboard. Uh, now as I said in this next section what we're going to do is we're just going to go into all those elements in a lot more detail um, and the starting point for us on that is with the wood core. Okay, so we've looked at how a board is laid up. Now let's actually take a look at the constituent components of the board. Now the first place we're going to start is the core. Now I like to describe a snowboard core as the engine room of the board. It's where the designer determines the performance, the way the board feels underneath your feet, and the type of riding that it's going to do. Now, pretty much every snowboard on the market utilizes a wood core. Now, there are a few um, foam cores and composite cores still out there, but the majority are wood cores. Now, the reason that you use wood is, is kind of obvious, really, because A, it's very durable, B, uh, it's easily accessible, C, it's sustainable. But D is the most important one for a snowboard construction, and that is the makeup of wood. So basically, wood is formed from grains um, or fibers that kind of sit together and are bunched together. Now, if you magnify those fibers out, they look like tubes. 
And what those tubes are really good at doing is just dissipating energy. So when you're stood in the middle of a snowboard, that energy is gonna flow down those tubes and move down the whole length of the board. And as we were talking about um, powering the side cut up, by having that energy move through the length of the board, it's just gonna allow you to power that side cut up all the way through the turn. So that's kind of one of the key reasons that you use wood. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of really run through how we construct a snowboard core uh, and that's going to show you really how it's easy for designers to actually alter how the board performs. What it's also going to do is just give you a better understanding when you're, when you're looking at buying a board and you see that the core is a, a mix of Aspen and uh, Birch or Aspen and Beach or Aspen Popular, Aspen Polonia. Uh, it just lets you understand what those uh, materials do and how they affect how the board rides. Okay, so the starting point for every wood core is this, basically. Um, this is a vertically laminated core in its raw form. So snowboard cores are all made with vertical laminations. And what a vertical lamination is, is basically just sticking strips of wood together with the grain running vertically. Now the reason you use a vertical laminate of wood instead of using just a, a, a strip of wood cut from a tree is that by using smaller strips you can offset any imperfections in the wood. If you basically take a slice of a tree um, there are different stiffnesses within that slice where you have something like a knot here um, if it's one slice, you'll have a big knot there. You'll maybe have a knot here. So you get a really inconsistent flex by using a, um, a single strip of wood. By using multiple strips of wood, uh, those imperfections are going to have a minimal effect on the overall feel of the board. So it just lets you build a board that rides consistently across um, all the models, rather than with a slice of wood, is going to have a board that just every single model is going to ride different and flex differently. What vertical laminating also allows you to do is use different types of wood within the laminations. So if you want a little bit more performance, you can integrate stiffer and harder woods into the laminations to give you a bit more performance. Now, what you wouldn't do is create a whole core out of those stiffer and harder woods because it's just gonna weigh, it's gonna weigh far too much uh, and it's probably going to be dead because it's going to be too stiff. With a vertical lamination, you can get that perfect control of stiffness and ride a feel by using various combinations of wood. Now, what we're going to do now is just going to show you how a manufacturer would use those combinations. What you'll find on most boards when you look on the websites, um, it will actually show you how they put different woods in the cores. So hopefully this bit is just going to give you an idea of what what that actually does in terms of improving the way the ride board rides. Okay, so on, on most entry level boards and boards that just want a softer flex like park and freestyle boards, the manufacturer would just use one type of wood. That wood is generally either poplar or aspen depending on where the core is made. And that, what that does is just gives you a consistent feel. Uh, it's the perfect balance between durability and flex. So it gives you a great overall ride, but it's also really tough. Now, if you want a little bit more performance from that core, you can then integrate harder woods into that. And that harder wood is just gonna create stiffer zones. Now, as you can see from the graphic here, the first, uh, the first zone we're going to look at is just by running two stiffer beams through the centre of the board. Now what those stiffer beams through the centre of the board do is just power up the core across its length and they also add stiffer zones underneath the binding area just to give um, a better retention for the binding inserts. Now the next point is then to move that wood from the middle to the edges as in the graphic above. By Concentrating those stiffer woods towards the edges, it's just going to power up the side cut more. So as again, we were looking at how you drive energy into that side cut through the turn. By having stiffer woods here, it's just going to give you more power from those side cut. And then when you come out the turn, it's just going to have more pop on the edge that's just going to drive you into the turn. You can then run uh, stiffer woods either at the edges, 
and through the middle. So that's just gonna give you that kind of power on the edge, and it's also giving you, give you more power through the center of the board, make it stiffer and more responsive. Next up, we've got then um, this section here, as you can see in the graphic, with the green sections underneath the feet on the core. Now what that represents is a technology that Burton used called EGD. So EGD stands for Engineered Grain Direction. Now, as uh, the standard stringers here are made of tubes, like I said earlier, that that's gonna move energy across the length of the board. What Burton do with EGD is they actually turn the grain the other way around underneath the uh, toes and heels. And by turning the grain around, that's just gonna direct the energy directly to the edges underneath the toes and heels. It's just gonna give you a little bit more edge bite and a little bit more response under the toe and heel. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it just enhances the performance to the edge. Okay, so from that, we're then gonna to go to the next graphic here. Now, this graphic here is what I call pre-tensioned wood stringers. Now, this is a technology that I, I first saw it probably 15 or 20 years ago on uh, Burt Lamar's Elevation, uh, Elevation brand. And then it kind of disappeared after that. But over the last few years, we've really kind of seen it um, gaining more popularity on higher spec boards. And basically what this is doing is where you've got the stiffer woods along the edges of the board, what the manufacturers are doing is like pre-tensioning that wood. So they're putting it under load and then fastening it into the core. And because that wood is then under load, when you load that even more, it's just gonna give a really dynamic and powerful flex. Um, so that's really the only reason you're kind of seeing that on higher end boards. Um, so that's really how manufacturers would use different woods. Um, we're going to run through the characteristics of the different woods shortly. It's quite um, a number orientated technical section. So we're going to run through it quite quickly, but it'll just show you why those manufacturers use different woods and what those woods bring to the table. So that is how you would create the core. Uh, now, once you've kind of got past this stage and you've made up the core, it then comes down to milling the profile. And basically what, the, what milling the profile of the core does is then just determines the flex through the length. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this and bring in a core um, after it's been milled. So that is basically uh, the core once it's been milled and shaped. Now what this milling process does, so if you can, if I'll hold this here so you can see it, uh, you're actually milling different thicknesses through the length of the core. And what that's gonna do is determine the overall flex of the board. So where you've got zones that you mill thinner, the board is gonna be softer, and zones where you've got the board uh, milled thicker is it's going to be stiffer. Now, there are various ways you can mill the cord depending on what kind of uh, riding characteristics you want out of the board. So if you want the board powerful through its whole length, you're still gonna mill it thinner, but you're gonna leave thicker zones. It's gonna be a thicker milling, if that makes sense. Uh, you want a really soft board, you're gonna mill it thinner. Now, what we're also seeing as well is a lot of brands coming up with their own custom milling profiles. And, and that is basically a Burton's squeeze box, a Salomon's popster core. And really what they're doing on that is just milling thick and thick zones all the way through the length of the board. What you would traditionally get with a snowboard is thin at the tips and then gradually getting thicker towards the middle and then back thinner towards the tail. What um, Burton do with uh, Squeezebox and Salomon do with Popster, they're just milling thicker and thin zones all the way through the length of the board. And that's just letting them dial in the perfect performance for the riding characteristics of each separate board. So by just controlling where you place those thick and thin zones, uh, you're just kind of getting more of a custom milling. So that is really how you would determine um, the flex through the length of the board. So what I'm just gonna do now is just really kind of run quickly through the types of wood that manufacturers use in a snowboard. So um, the first two woods are Poplar and Aspen, and that pretty much accounts for 
a large percentage of every snowboard. So as I said, when we we're running through that first section on cores, if you want a board that's relatively soft uh, and relatively predictable, you'll use 100% Aspen or 100% Popular. Now those two woods, in terms of characteristics, are almost identical. And they really, the only real difference really is there where the core is manufactured. What generally tend to happen is European sourced cores are popular, um, some US core, uh, sourced cores are Aspen. But those two trees are pretty much from the same family. Um, their characteristics are, are almost identical. The only slight difference in that is that Aspen has, as you can see on the chart, a slightly higher a bending strength than Poplar does. But overall, there's very little difference between those two woods. Um, and as I said, you'll use those woods for pretty much all the, all the construction on a low end or softer flexing board and the bulk of the construction on stiffer boards. Right, you then move to what we call, well, what I call the power woods. And these are the woods that you're just adding more power and more strength to the board. Um, the first one of those is probably the most popular one, and that is beach. And basically beach, if we kind of pull up the figures here and just look at the difference in terms of the hardness, the density of those, uh, the burst strength and the bending strength compared to the um, Aspen and Poplar. They're a lot stronger, but what they also are, looking at that top um, graph there, is they're a lot heavier. And that's one of the reasons why you wouldn't make the whole board out of that because it would weigh a ton. So just putting heavier, denser, more powerful woods along the edges or running through the middle, is just gonna power up the core a little bit more. The next wood that we're gonna look at is birch. Now again, going through all those uh, categories, it's almost identical to beach. But the one category that is a little bit stronger on that is the bending strength. So that's why you see birch being used on slightly more higher end performance orientated cores, just because it just takes a little bit more power to bend it. And that's just going to give you a bit more of a dynamic overall feel to the board. Right, the next wood up is bamboo. Now, if you look at the scales on this and compare them to the others, um, you can see why a lot of brands are using bamboo. Uh, in terms of uh, hardness, it's a lot harder. Um, its tensile strength is a lot higher. Its burst strength is pretty similar. Um, and its bending strength is similar. But Again, look at that top graph there. Its weight is a lot lower. So you can get that super performance without overly increasing weight of the board. Now, another big advantage of using bamboo is that it's sustainable as well. Commercial bamboo grows really, really quickly, up to five inches a day. So uh, it is a prodigious crop. Uh, it's easy accessible and it's really sustainable. So again, that's one of the reasons why you're seeing a lot more bamboo coming into boards. Um, with bamboo, you can use it um, within the core, but you can also use it as a, uh, a thin layer as well, like a bamboo veneer to add pop to the board. So it is really versatile in lots of different ways. So they're the power woods and they're the woods that add strength and um, pop to the core. Uh, the next wood that we're gonna take a look at is Polonia. Now Polonia, when, when I kind of first um, started doing these, there were very few boards that used Polonia, but now uh, it's really, really common. And what manufacturers use Polonia for is to cut the weight of the board. Now, Polonia comes from the same family as Balsa, so it's really, really light, but it does have some pretty decent strength properties for what is a lightweight wood. So if you look at this um, chart here, as you can see, you've got a fair bit of density. Its burst strength is quite high as well. Now, if I was to replace that with balsa, all of those scales would just be sitting slightly above zero. So what you're getting with Polonia is that durability that you need within a, a core, but you're also getting a wood that's really light as well. So that's one of the reasons why it's becoming more and more popular is that you're actually getting a bit of strength, uh, but you're also getting lightweight. Now, along with those um, harder woods, you're generally gonna use 
Polonia in certain areas of the board. You're going to use the Poplar and the Aspen in the kind of the areas where you need strength, but you're going to add Polonia onto those stringers where strength isn't that important. So you're just going to build up the full width of the core with a combination of different woods. And all those woods have different characteristics to give you the overall performance of the board. So that's basically the wood core. Um, I hope it made sense. Um, and it wasn't too technical in terms of looking at those grades of woods. But by seeing the differences in those woods, it really just does give you an idea of why a manufacturer would use them. So um, that's wood cores done.